for chamber music, of course, and historically the chamber music that we are associated with is particularly music for strings, string quartets, piano trios, uh, sometimes duos, quintets, and uh, that's the tradition that we're, we're associated with and we've be, been going back for 120, 130 years. The London Chamber Music Society was created in 1999 as an independent charity uh, to run the concerts at Colway Hall. Prior to that, they'd been run by the South Place uh, Concerts Committee since 1929 when the hall opened. Originally, the concerts were at South Place, which is at Finsbury Pavement near uh, Liverpool Street, and the first concert there had taken place in 1887, so we can trace our history back for uh, over 120 years. The idea was to bring fine chamber music and, and classical music to poor Londoners, really. It was felt the common man could be civilised, perhaps, by some connection with uh, good Western art music. And that was the mission, and partly that's why the concerts were at 6.30 on a Sunday as well as an alternative for church. So if, the, if um, proletariat weren't going to church, at least give them some culture. And that's really why concerts were free, of course, and there was a collection plate at the end of the concerts. And I think that went on right until the 20th century, right until around about the Second World War. The concerts originally started at South Place, which was the home of the newly formed Ethical Society, a non-religious body, which was under the sort of guidance of Moncure Conway, whose daughter was a very uh, good pianist and very interested in music and there was a tremendous core of people who loved chamber music, really adored it and it was those people that in fact decided to do this thing. Alfred Clements, the first organiser, was a real genuine Victorian of the old school. He could have walked straight out of a Dickens novel and he in fact was absolutely unapproachable. But he certainly did it from its inception, from 1887 till the day he died in 39. He looked exactly the same as from right the time I first saw him. Uh, you know, he was this rather grey-haired, bent little old man with a beard. And as far as I can remember, right going back ever so early, he used to come onto the platform at every at the interval of every concert and asked for money. <laughs> you know, the concerts were really living hand to mouth all the time, all the years that they were going. Looking back at the history of the concerts, some of the um, early concerts were uh, anniversary concerts of really some major musical events. In April 1897, there was an all Brahms concert because Johannes Brahms had died the week before. Some of the early performances of Dvorak quartets when they were all still new, possibly the British premiere, or certainly London premiere, of uh, Verklater Nacht by Schoenberg in 1910, which was quite something. A concert of all um, women composers' music, I think in 1914 or 1915, which was clearly connected with the suffragette movement. So an amazing historical legacy. In 1929, when they moved into Conway Hall, things got very, very good, and perhaps those are the sort of halcyon days, that is to say from about 1929 till 39. Again, the acoustic proved to be superb, and it was eminently suitable for the sort of music which was being produced. The music essentially was Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven, Schubert, the romantics, but there was always this interest in producing really good modern music. So, in fact, the Bartok Quartet. Uh, they were regularly played, um, as was a lot of music which had its first performance at Conway Hall.
Just after Bartok's death in 1945, the society put on a whole series of all six Bartok quartets, which at that time was really quite an experimental thing to do. So that's something that from the artistic direction point of view, one has felt a useful thread to continue. So in any season, you will see that we always give a platform to some new music and uh, that there's a good mix of the new and old. The fact that the concerts have been running as long as they have and that when we play here, we realise that we're part of a long tradition, um, gives the whole atmosphere a very special flavour. Personally, I've attended concerts here since I'm about 10, 11 years old, coming to hear my father, who's often played as pianist here. I played with him later here. I came to hear other quartets. I remember some marvellous concerts, chamber music concerts, pieces I've heard for the, for the first time here at Conway Hall. So I think that everybody who's been to the South Place concerts will have memories of hearing great masterpieces for the first time in quite relaxed and informal surroundings. We have 450 members and many have been coming for a very, very long time. Probably our longest attender is Mary Lindsay. She's been coming to the concerts now for 82 years, which is absolutely amazing. But many will say they've been coming for 30, 40, even 50 years. My parents were keen music lovers and played a bit at home and I was brought up to play the piano, had piano lessons, and around in 1925, they decided to take me to these concerts. I suppose I was just nearly, or just past my 10th birthday, I think. I expect it was a string quartet, and it was at the old chapel near Broad Street Station, what I do remember of it was that the stage was very small and that the players really came very near the edge of the stage, which rather worried me. <laughs> For many, many, many years, for, for decades in fact, the musicians played for Peanuts. Um, great names, people like Solomon played, people like John Barbie Wally, who people don't perhaps realize was a cellist, Isai, the great fiddle player, and then of course string quartets. The Griller string quartet was in its day the sort of Amadeus, which came later. They played many, many times. Of course the Griller stood out because Alfred Clemens had such faith in them uh, and they played so often. <laughs> Uh, I mean, uh, they were willing to come for next to nothing and uh, he was willing to let them come. And, of course, their, high, their standard was very, very high. But there, I mean, there were other great quartets, the Stratton Quartet, the Broser Quartet, and so on, and the Kutcher Quartet. But uh, I, I, I think, on the whole, the Griller, Griller Quartet stood out. And, of course, Sidney Griller himself, when he became a... Professor of violin at the Royal Academy of Music and chamber music coach. I mean, he himself produced a lot of young quartets uh, to follow, and was a really a, an excellent authority on the on quartet playing. The performers that play for us have often created an association that's lasted for many decades. So the Amadeus Quartet started playing for the series in the 1940s and just kept on coming year after year until eventually um, they retired.